Hi everybody, welcome back to Home Life 365. Today I want to do a little different video. I want to do a follow-up on last week's video regarding food shortages and ways to prepare and stock your pantry. So today I've done a little presentation and I hope that it allows me to follow my thoughts and stay on track. I also will try to put chapters in the description below so that if you want to skip to certain parts of the video, it'll be easy to do so. So in last week's video, we talked about upcoming food shortages and we talked about a lot of excuses that we hear and I've just put some here that you may be able to relate to and things you may have thought or heard and you know, it's things like it costs too much money and I can't afford it. I don't have time. Um, there's no way $5 a week can make any difference. Um, it's too late to start or where do I start? And a lot of people believe that this will never happen here. And I think in the last couple of years, a lot of things have happened here that we didn't think would. So I hope you'll bear with me today on doing this as a presentation. Like I said, it'll, it'll be easier for me. It also puts it in writing for you if you want to jot down any of the ideas or budgets. I'm actually going to get into shopping lists and I think there's a lot of useful information here that you can take advantage of. So let's get started. So to get started today, I just wanted to, to mention to you again um, that even Joe Biden has came out and said that there's going to be food shortages and that it's going to be real. And I would add that most Americans have never seen food shortages. Uh, most of us have been blessed throughout our lives. There may have been times that budgets were tight and we really had to skimp out on what we purchased, but we've never had a situation where we go to the store and it's not there to purchase. And I think 2020 should have definitely taught us about the fragility of our supply chain. We all remember the 2020 toilet paper fiasco <laughs> and it's not fun. It's just not, it's not something you want to do to, to need something and you go to the store and it's not even available to buy. So I hope that this video will help someone. Plus, let's talk about the inflation rates. 8.5% as of March 2022. And you see I put on this slide, ha ha, we all know it's about twice that. So we all know that we must start stocking up. But where do we start? So I've created the following shopping list to get you started. They are based on my local Walmart here in East Tennessee. And the prices are, were effective as of yesterday, April 14th, 2022. And the prices I've included in this shopping list include a sales tax rate of 9.75%. And yes, I know a lot of you will think that's very high, but Tennessee does have high sales tax. And here locally where I am, it's 9.75. And groceries are calculated slightly lower, but I was unsure about the actual calculation and how they do that. So I just went with the, the 9.75. This means that in some cases on the upcoming shopping list, you should have a cushion. You should have a little extra money left over. It shouldn't cost you as much as I've calculated here. You can figure it. You can add your own sales tax. By all means, if you have some extra money, feel free to add one of those 54 cents of canned vegetables or a 76 cent bag of rice. And here's the best part. The budgets I've created here, the shopping list are based on budgets of $2.50, $5 or $10 per week. So I'm hoping that this can reach absolutely everyone. If you tell me that you don't have, can't have, can't come up with $2.50 a week, I think there's a bigger discussion to be had. I think at that point, um, we need to start talking about building household budgets and living within your means or possibly looking at life changes to where you can increase your income. I hope that everyone here can afford these budgets, maybe even double up on some of these budgets. 
So follow along and I'll go through the shopping list that I've created. So the way I've set this up is I've created eight week shopping list and it's broke down for each week to spend the amount that I said I will have budgeted for those weeks. You can absolutely change these to suit your own needs. This is only meant to be a guide. By all means, if your family doesn't eat items that are on this list, then don't purchase them. It, it won't be worth it. It's a waste of money. The last thing we need to do right now is waste money. So be sure that when you purchase items, that you're purchasing items that you're willing to eat, that, that you're fine with eating. So let's get started. I'm beginning here with the $2.50 per week budget. As I said, this is going to go for eight weeks. And at the end, we'll see how much could be accumulated on $2.50 a week for the eight weeks. So I'm going to try to run through these really quick, but I've, I have it printed here so that you can jot it down, you can copy it, you can screenshot it um, if you want to follow these guides. So week one, I have to buy one five pound bag of flour and one 26 ounce container of salt. And the subtotal on these should be $2 and four cents. And after tax, again, this is at my tax rate at 9.75%. The total would be $2 and 24 cents. On week two, buy one five pound bag of cornmeal and that's $2 and 28 cents. So after tax, $2.50. Week three, buy one four pound bag of sugar would subtotal to $2.12 and after tax would be $2.33. On week four, you should purchase one two pound bag of rice and one of the three packet packs of active dry yeast. And your total for that week should be around $2.55. I know that one went a little bit over, but some of the others are coming a little under. Of course, I can't get it perfectly at 250, but these are really close. So staying on the 250 a week budget for week five, buy one can of vegetables, any kind of vegetables your family will eat, as long as they're the great value cans that are 54 cents each right now. Also buy one 18 ounce container of quick oats. And that should give you a total of around $2.52. For week six, buy one two pound bag of pinto beans and one can of vegetables. Again, you select the vegetables, just keep it at 54 cents, unless you have extra money and then you can, can pick up a, a different brand or even an additional can. On week seven, pick up one one pound bag of rice. When purchasing your rice for storage, be sure to buy white rice. Brown rice has more fat in it and it can get rancid if it's stored. So if you only eat brown rice, go ahead and pick up the brown rice. It's going to cost a little bit more, but be sure to rotate through that and use it and replace it later to keep a bag in storage. Also pick up two five ounce cans of tuna. Those are 76 cents each. And your total for the week should be $2.55. For week eight, pick up another can of vegetables at 54 cents and an 18 ounce jar of peanut butter. And that should bring you in at $2.48. Now I will add that all of these items are great value items. So be sure that you're taking advantage of the lower prices of the store brands. So congratulations. If you've stuck with this shopping list for eight weeks, at the end of eight weeks, your pantry should have two pounds of pinto beans, three pounds of rice, three cans of vegetables, one 18 ounce container of oats, five pounds of flour, five pounds of cornmeal, one 26 ounce container of salt, four pounds of sugar, three packets of yeast, two cans of tuna, and a jar of peanut butter. Now that doesn't sound like a great deal of food, but if you look at that, this is in addition, that this is storage, that this is food that you're going to keep put away in case of an emergency, it's a great start. $2.50 can make a difference in your pantry. 
So now I'm going to start with the $5 per week budget. This is five per week, so that would be approximately $20 a month. I hope that most of you could work that into your budget. I'm going to run through these quickly, but they are on the screen to give you an opportunity to jot it down, take a screenshot if you want to follow along. Again, if you want to vary this, if you want to change it up to suit your family's needs, then by all means, that's what you should do. Never buy food that your family doesn't eat. If you don't buy tuna, find something that your family does eat that would be around the same price as the tuna and go ahead and replace that item. So for week one, pick up one five pound bag of flour, one 26 ounce container of salt that's just plain or iodized table salt, one three pack, one of the three packet packs of active dry yeast, and one 18 ounce jar of peanut butter. That should bring your total for the week to about $5.07. Again, this is based on 9.75% sales tax. Hopefully yours is lower than that. So the next week you should buy one five pound bag of cornmeal and one four pound bag of sugar. This should bring your total to about $4.83. On week three, I want you to pick up five cans of vegetables. Pick five cans, whatever you eat, whatever your family eats, just be sure they're the 54 cent great value vegetables. And I know in that price range, you can definitely get corn, green beans, and peas. I think um, there may be some other options. You'll just have to check your local Walmart to see what you have available at that price. Also pick up one 18 ounce container of quick oats and your total for week three should be $4.89. For week four, pick up one two pound bag of pinto beans and one two pound bag of rice. I mentioned on the, the previous budget, if you don't eat white rice and you only eat brown rice, go ahead and get what you can. It's going to cost a little bit more. Also, you're going to have to be sure to rotate through that rice because the brown rice will not store long term. It will get rancid. So my recommendation is white rice, but if you do not eat white rice, then by all means, substitute that with what you will eat. I also want you to pick up two cans of vegetables, the 54 cent great value vegetables. Your total for week four should be about $4.81. Okay, for week five, pick up one one pound bag of rice, Pick up one of the three packs of yeast. You can do, I have active dry yeast written, but you could do rapid rise as well. Pick up one of the four pack cans of five ounce tuna, and your total for that week should come to about $5.05. For week six, pick up one two pack of the 12 and a half ounce chunk chicken breast, and that should bring your total to around $5.09. On week seven, pick up one two pound bag of white rice and one two pound bag of pinto beans and two cans of vegetables of your choice. Just make sure they're the 54 cent great value vegetables. Also pick up one 26 ounce container of table salt. You can get plain or iodized and your total for the week should be $5.33. For week eight, pick up one two pound bag of rice one two pound bag of pinto beans and two cans of your choice of vegetables at 54 cents each. Your total for that week should be about $4.81. So congratulations if you made it through eight weeks of five dollars a week. This is what your pantry should have in it now. You should have six pounds of pinto beans, six pounds of rice, 11 cans of vegetables, one 18 ounce container of quick oats, five pounds of flour, five pounds of cornmeal, two 26 ounce containers of salt, four pounds of sugar, six packs of yeast, four cans of tuna, two cans of chicken, and one jar of peanut butter. As you can see, $5 a week really can make a difference in a short amount of time. I mean, this is eight weeks of shopping and it's certainly a good foundation to start with. Okay, now we're going to start off with the $10 a week budget. 
I hope that a lot of you can afford $10 a week. Um, if you can't afford $10 a week, that's about $40 a month. Um, some good ideas may be to try to reduce your cable or internet bill or check around for your cell phone service providers to see if there's a, a better rate available through a different company. There are a lot of ideas on ways to cut your expenses. Also a lot of ideas on ways to make a little extra money. And I think at $40 a month, that's not a, a whole lot to try to come up with. So I hope most of you watching this will be able to take advantage of this $10 per week budget. It definitely will build your foundation a lot faster than the previous two. So I'm going to get started and run through these. So for week one, pick up one four pack container of the 12 and a half ounce chunk chicken breast. Pick up two cans of great value vegetables of your choice the 54 cent vegetables, um, whatever kind your family wants to eat. And that should bring your total to about $9.94 for the week. For week two, pick up one eight pound bag of pinto beans and one four pound bag of sugar and one pack of the three packets of yeast. That should bring your total for the week to around $9.83. For week three, Pick up one two pound bag of rice, one can of vegetables of your choice at 54 cents, one 18 ounce container of quick oats, one five pound bag of flour, one five pound bag of cornmeal, one 18 ounce jar of peanut butter, and your total for this week should be around $10.23. On week four, pick up one 20 pound bag of white rice. And that should bring your total after tax to around $9.86. Okay, moving along to week five. Pick up one two pound bag of pinto beans. Pick up five cans of vegetables of your choice at 54 cents each. Those are the great value canned vegetables that are 54 cents. One five pound bag of flour and one four pack of the five ounce cans of tuna. When I say four pack, I mean uh, the four pack. Don't pick up four individual cans. It'll cost more. It'll put you over your budget. Find the actual four pack of the cans. So the total for the week should be around $9.97. For week six, pick up one two pound bag of pinto beans, six cans of vegetables. And be sure to mix these vegetables up. If, if you eat green beans and corn, be sure to split it so that you're getting green beans and corn. Most of us won't want to have um, only green beans and that's the only thing that we'll have to eat every day. So be sure to, to try to get a variety and things that your family enjoys eating. Also pick up one 18 ounce jar of peanut butter and one 30 ounce jar of grape jelly. Now that is a treat that's special. Um, the 30 ounce jar of great value grape jelly is $2 and 28 cents. If, you know that you don't need jelly, don't want jelly, by all means, grab another can of peanut butter or buy another um, four or five cans of the canned food. I just think that it's important to have some things that will just make people feel good. And I think, you know, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch every once in a while could be far better, especially for the kids than just a peanut butter sandwich. So I threw that grape jelly in there, but be sure to swap it out for whatever you want. Or if you want another flavor of, of jelly, if you don't like grape, some other flavors cost a little bit more. So be aware of that, that it might cost you a little extra. Um, but it is a nice treat to have something, some things around that are sweet and just make you feel good, make you happy. So your total for that week should be around $9.97. So on week seven, pick up one eight pound bag of pinto beans one four pack of the five ounce cans of tuna. Add on to that one twenty six ounce salt, table salt, plain or iodized. Plain will store longer, but if you're rotating through it, if it's something that you normally are going to be using and replacing, you can get iodized. It'll be fine um, for short term storage and use. Your total for that week should be about ten dollars and thirty six cents. On week eight, pick up 
a four pack of 12 and a half ounce chunk chicken breast and also pick up one of the three packets of yeast and your total for week eight should be about nine dollars and seventy cents okay congratulations if you followed through for eight weeks on the ten dollar a week budget your pantry should now have a great basis uh, you should have 20 pounds of pinto beans 22 pounds of rice 14 cans of vegetables one container of quick oats 10 pounds of flour, five pounds of cornmeal, one 26 ounce container of salt, four pounds of sugar, six packets of yeast, eight cans of tuna, eight cans of chicken, two jars of peanut butter, and one jar of grape jelly. So that is great work. I think that's a great solid foundation for you to start with. So just a few final thoughts for everyone. Only buy food that your family eats. These shopping lists that I've created are just ideas to make you think and to demonstrate and show that $2.50 a week truly can make a difference. And of course, $10 a week can make a great difference in having a, a pantry stocked for emergencies or for anything, really. Um, you could have a power outage from a, a storm. You could have a winter storm like Texas had years ago that lasted quite a while. Um, you could have a job loss. You could have a sickness. Um, you know, you could be out of work for five or 10 days over COVID. There are a lot of things that a, a prepared pantry will just cushion the blow. I hope that everyone is paying attention. If you didn't see last week's video about food shortages where I talked to you about why I'm doing this video, um, I'll try to leave a link up here to the video. I hope you'll check that out. I hope this video is going to help you. I also want to add that if, if you have a different budget than what's listed in these lists, for example, you, you can afford $7.50 a week. By all means, combine the $2.50 and the $5 a week shopping list and you'll be building that much faster. If you can afford $15 a week, combine the $10 and $5 shopping list. It'll all build up a lot quicker the more money you can put toward it. So if you've made it this far in this video, bless your heart. And I know that you are you're trying to work on building your food pantry. Otherwise, you wouldn't have hung out for this long presentation. I just want to say to you that you can do this. You can. Um, if you have any ideas on ways to affordably stock and build your pantry, please leave it in the comments below. Share it with the community so that we can all start adopting the practices that help us be more sustainable and help us build our food security. As I had said in last week's video, if you have any extra money at the end of the week, I would always add some garden seeds to any of these shopping lists. I mentioned last week to plant, plant a, even if it's just a four foot by four foot area of your yard, plant it and grow some food. Learn how to grow some food if you don't know how. So pick up some garden seeds if you have a little bit of extra money. I know some Walmarts have had seeds as cheap as 20 cents a pack. So you can definitely add those onto some of these week's budgets. So the last and final thing is if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video. If you know someone that this will be helpful for, please do so. And I appreciate you hanging out with me today, and I hope you come back for the next video. Until then, have a blessed Easter weekend.